And um, I mean, that was a, a little bit of a slap in the face, but I suppose it was what I needed at the time. You know, we were, we were walking in the mall the other day and I was looking at this boat and it was a very nice boat. And, you know, I, I thought, well, I live close to the lake. I always thought I'd have a nice boat and, you know, sail it on the lake. And I'd take my son. We'd go jet skiing and all these different <laughs> kind of things. And, and, you know, surfing. And you name it, we were going to do it and go fishing. And, and Angela said, whoops, there goes another dream of John's now, you know, as it were. But then she said, you know what? The trouble is, that for the last little while, we've been living for brass dreams. She said, when there's gold things we can attend for, attain for. You know, the, the passion, the fire that burns in my heart heart and has burned since I was six years old for 22 years now to see a great awakening sweep across the western world and, and, and especially in, in Europe and, uh, and a hunger and a, a yearning burning desire to see the stadiums filled I remember the first time I saw Wembley Stadium I was seven years old and somehow I had a knowing in my heart that the stadiums and the arenas were going to be filled for the gospel and I know what it means to contend for these things my friend I know what it means to lay down your life and, and seek after the things of God. I know what it means to, to be a Second Chronicles 7 verse 14 person where I humble myself and I, I pray and I, I seek in the face of God and I'm, I'm actively living a life and, and pursuing holiness. And I've, I've experienced some encounters and some things in God and power that it shocked me. Some of the things I've, I've seen and experienced God do. I remember one time in in, in West Virginia, in the United States, I was praying for a man and he, he'd been in an accident 35 or 40 years before. He was completely deaf in one ear because his inner eardrum and ear had been removed surgically after that accident. And the other ear, he was about 85% deaf, but with, with a hearing aid, he could, he could make out what you were saying and could communicate. I remember I prayed for him and the power of God knocked into the floor. I promise you I didn't push him. And he laid down with kind of a, a bit of a thud and his hearing aid fell out of his good ear, as, as good as you, know, what you would call it. And he began to weep. And to be honest with you, I felt bad. I thought, oh, he must have hurt his head. And so I knelt down beside him and the, the musicians were up on the platform and they were playing and, and, and singing a song. And so it can be hard to hear in an environment like that even when you have two you know, healthy ears. And so I knelt down, I said, sir, are you okay? And he said, with his eyes closed, he said, I, I feel wonderful. And, and I realized something that was going on that he, I don't know if he even knew. His hearing aid had fallen out. I said, sir, how you, how, how's your hearing? He said, well, he said, he said, I feel good. He said, there's something churning in my ear. And I picked up his little hearing aid and I said, sir, open your eyes. And he opened my eye, his eyes and saw me holding that little hearing aid. And, and the tears began to just now stream down his face. And, and I said, sir, what's going on? And he put his hand over the ear that had had an eardrum, an inner ear removed 35 years previously, surgically. He said, John, I feel something churning and growing in my ear. I said, well, sir, stay there as long as this is happening, as long as this is going on, you know. All I know is if it's, if it's working, let it work. And so, but he covered that ear and he could hear me perfectly out of the ear that previously had, had only 80 or 15% hearing, even with a hearing aid. By the time he left, he wasn't hearing perfectly out of the missing eardrum ear, but he could begin to hear me. God had completely restored the, the one ear and was working a miracle in the other ear. I, I, I've, I've had experiences like that and I know what births them in my life. It's, it's living the life of Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Being a contender, someone that's hungry for God. I, I've had times when I've seen hundreds of people swept into the kingdom of God and, and prodigals seemingly come running from their seats. But I'm a Jonah generation. I'm, I'm, at times, I'm... I'm I want to see a great awakening. I, I know the calling, but at times I feel like I run from it. And I wonder how many people are there like me. I, I'm, I'm ashamed to admit these things to you, my friend. This is not me bragging on my, my great spiritual you know, encounters with the Lord. I, I'm saying there's so many mistakes I've made. So many times I've, I've procrastinated and, and been lazy. I believe that we throw out the word generation a lot, but it's the way to describe a, a mass group of people at one time. I believe that we are called to be that, that generation that across the nations and across the planet will see a great awakening. That the Holy Spirit poured out left, right and center. That God's glory covers the earth like the waters of the sea. But what it comes down to is this. Will we respond like Jonah or will we respond like the apostles and said, Lord, we'll, we'll lay down our lives. 
See, the Bible declares this, says, my people shall be willing in the day of my power. Right. When, it's, when, it's the, when the day of God's power comes, you know that back of that or behind that or backing that up is some people that are willing mm-hmm. and obedient. And they're eating the fruit and the good of the land. That's right. Well, you know, talking about the assignments, John has an assignment. I have an assignment. You have an assignment. And... I think to the Apostle Paul and the assignment that he had, and he ended, he said, I finished my course with joy. That needs to be your and my cry, that we will finish our race with joy, that we'll be done. Do you know, whatever it is that God has for you to do, it lies dormant in you until you begin to release it. And as you begin to release it and then you start to fulfill your destiny, you can still turn your back on it or you can see it through to completion. And that's what I want to do. That's what I want to see this generation do. I want us to reach the end of our days with no more potential in us. Nothing in there is lying dormant. There's nothing that could happen if only we would live the life if only we would pay the price instead it has all come out of us and there's nothing left it is the end that's what we need to be waiting and desiring and seeking after to end and say just like Paul I have finished my course not I've quit you know and and reach Jesus at the end when hear that well done faithful servant because there's nothing left in you nothing left in me to fulfill We've run our race. We've finished our course. But that means that we have to start following our calling. We have to be not just obedient, although we do have to be obedient, but there needs to be a willingness that rises up in you, that rises up in me to fulfill our destiny, to follow our assignment and to pursue it with all that we are, with all that we have. There is a treasure on the inside of you and on the inside of me. And we need to start drawing it out for the sake of others. Do you live in the West Midlands? Are you hungry to see God move in our region? I want to invite you to come and be a part of our church service this Sunday at Gateway where we pastor. We are a hungry group of Christians. We are, we are passionate about seeing God move in our region. In fact, our motto of our church is Passion Gathers Here. We're hungry to create an atmosphere where the presence of God can come and touch people and transform lives. We meet in Old Bridge, Junction 2 of the M5. Uh, We want to invite you to come. I I guarantee you, you'll feel welcome. I guarantee you, you will know that we're glad you're there. So why don't you come and join us this Sunday and let the presence of God and the Spirit of God touch your heart and stir your heart with us at Gateway Christian Center. So, Father God, right now, I I come before you. And, Lord, in in the closing few minutes of this program, Lord, I stand right now as as one that has let you down so many times. But yet also through my God, I've I've run through a troop and, and leapt over a wall. Lord, I know what it means to contend, and I, I know what it means to draw back. But Lord, I stand on behalf of of the nations. I stand on behalf right now almost as, as one member of the body of Christ. And I say, Lord, forgive us, for we have sinned. Forgive us, Lord. We have loved ourselves. And we've we've allowed our, our belly to be our God. We've we've allowed pleasure and, and our careers and, and our families. And there's so many things, Lord, to stand in the way, but yet we know there's a mighty calling. So, Lord, please forgive us. Have mercy on us. Let us have one more chance or one more opportunity. God, I pray, come stir our hearts again. Stir our hearts again with the things which are stirring in your heart. Lord, I pray, break my heart open with the things that are breaking in your heart. Lord, I don't want to be one like Jonah that runs and runs. And it's not till I spent three days inside a whale that I finally begrudgingly say yes. But Lord, let, I, let me be glad when they say, let us go to the house of the Lord. <laughs> Lord, like the Apostle Paul, let me say, I forget everything that's behind me and I, I press toward the mark. 
Lord, I, I worship you. And I know, Lord, in my heart it bears witness that it's time. It's time for a great awakening. It's time for the rain. But Lord, your word says that we must ask you of this rain in the time of the latter rain. And that then you would make bright clouds and, and give us showers of rain. So Lord, right now in this, the time of the latter rain, in this, the time of your mighty outpouring, I stand here and I dare to boldly and humbly and confidently ask of the Lord rain in this, the time of the latter rain. God on the just on, on the, and on the unjust. People that are praying and people that aren't praying. My God, let it rain. Let there be a mighty outpouring of your spirit. And Lord, I ask you all over the earth right now, touch your church. Touch your church. Lord, that we would not keep living for ourselves and living after our own way and our, our comfort and our convenience and our our luxuries of life but would recognize as born again Christians we have a million millenniums to enjoy ourselves I, I can live somewhere nice in heaven I can have a, a big house and, and a relaxed day when I get there this is my moment this is our hour to live for you Father I don't want to run for even another day I don't want to be hiding from you for even but a moment but God turn my heart towards you Turn our hearts to you, O oh Lord. Turn our hearts like you rose up prayers or raised up prayers in Wales a hundred years ago. A group of young people that were more hungry for you than they were for themselves. Lord, I pray raise up more. Raise up more. Lord, that in every nation, out of every tribe and every tongue, you would gather a people called by, by your name that would humble themselves, pray, seek your face and turn from your wicked ways. Uh, that, Lord, that you might hear from heaven, forgive our sin and heal our land. God, I'm asking you for revival. I'm asking you for a great awakening that all might see and that all might know that Jesus Christ is Lord and there is no other.